What's going on, fellas? This here is the first test of an oxyhydrogen device for some experiments I'm going to be doing for Muhammad. Uh, now, the purpose of these experiments has nothing to do with this machine. This machine is just to get us some hydrogen gas. That's the only purpose. It doesn't have any special requirements. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the project. We just needed this to facilitate the production of gas for the experiments that Muhammad's going to be doing. And I just wanted to show you guys um, what a 30 amp oxyhydrogen flame looks like. Now this is 30 amps at 250 volts. So that's about 7,500 watts. But that's just the volt amps. The actual wattage would be lower than that. This little meter that I have here does give the wattage display, but I'm not sure that I believe it because it only reads 133 volts when the cell's on full power. And when you touch it with a probe, you get 243 volts at full, full power. So something's going on with this June Tech module. But nonetheless, let's uh, get this thing fired up to... You can see that's a pretty enormous amount of gas. Uh, yeah. So let's light this thing up. Here's about 25 amps at 250 volts. I dropped this nozzle on the ground, that's why it's a little messed up. I don't know if you can see that inner cone or not. very hard to get a piece of copper this big this hot so this can definitely braid Seven amps. Insane production. Look at all that. It's getting kind of hot. Yeah, we got to get this radiator situation squared away. Let's see what the max of this thing is. Oops. See this in the shot. Pretty freaking impressive, eh? It's an incredible gas production. That's at only 18 amps. I 
I still have some grease and stuff inside this cell from um, some of the o-ring grease and stuff like that and it's making a little bit of foam other than that we're good to go uh, there's a couple more changes I'm gonna make to this thing I wanted to see how it worked after the first test run for example I'm gonna swap out the intake and the discharge of my cooling system now as far as convection is concerned it's hooked up right but when a lot of bubbles get in here it um, struggles to pump the fluid up into the radiator. So, I'm just going to swap these two lines out. This line is going to be connected to the intake of the pump instead of the discharge. But, uh, yeah, nonetheless, this thing can really crank some gas. Look at that. Here's the diode array that I'm using. Big old fat beefy diode. This is what we got going for the control panel. Like I said, I got a couple more things I want to do. But uh, you've seen how big the flame was. It's nowhere near as big as we need it, Muhammad. Um, but then again... We're only at half power here. I didn't want to go filling this thing up with the maximum amount of electrolyte right away. I just wanted to see how it performed in case um, something started leaking or something midway. Nope. Starting to drink my bubbler there. But for the most part, it's definitely uh, a lot of gas. I did try the air compressor setup. What this air compressor does is mixes compressed air into the bubbler to kind of decrease the what is that called the flame front speed of this gas because it's just too explosive in most applications you see there how we just had a big old flashback even through this thing um, the high flow is just too much for it it needs to be longer, I think, for this high of a flow. As I said, this will work to, for 5 liters per minute just fine. I sat there and popped it off on that cell all day long. This one over here. This is about 5 liters a minute. So, for the most part, uh, I think I'm done testing the, today. I'm just going to throw this video together for you real quick, Muhammad, so you can see where we're at on this thing. We are producing an enormous amount of gas. And we're not all the way there yet. I still could put a lot more electrolyte in this. I just didn't want a super hot mix right away. It's about three gallons of water in this thing. And I am using um, some food grade potassium hydroxide. So, that's where we're at. You've seen the flame. So, yeah, this is only at about half power, though. We are going to try this again. But first, like I said, I want to change that cooling pump because I can hear that the bubbles getting entrained in there, and I can hear it just stop pumping. You know how the pump sounds when it's just gargling and bubbles? So I think once we move it, the intake down to here, we'll be all good. See, I wanted the cool... The fresh cool water to come in here and end up directly into the electrolyzer that's why that was placed there and the hot water coming down into the top of this reservoir would go directly into the pump but the bubbles had different ideas so we're going to swap that out and uh show you the power gauge here Let's turn this up to uh see there she hit about 45 amps to start now, if we leave them flow pumps on, thirty-four amps. Oh crap! Let's mess that up. I just shot a bunch of crap into the bubbler that time. <laughs> There's too much water in here for forty-five amps. 
So that's another thing I'm doing is I'm learning the level that the water has to be. And um, when we go to run a system like this, what I have is another container over here. And inside of this container, I was thinking about, um, I don't know what I want to do yet. We need to put a float valve inside of here. It can't be a float switch because it'll blow us up most likely. But um, a float valve inside of here that would turn the water on and off based on the height of the water. And that will keep the water level inside of this machine consistent. When you're using this much power, you have to have a continuous um, input of water. Or at least, you know, a cycle. Because if you don't, the electrolyte ratio will increase and the amperage just goes up. But, uh, nonetheless. Yeah, I overdid it. Still insane production, though. Pretty insane. I'll show you guys the flame with the air pump on tomorrow. This day has to end at some point. That's the sun coming up, not going down.